In this lesson, we will study about the file read and write operation with Python program. In this video, we will do it for the text file. And in the next lesson, we will study about the CSV file read and write operation. Why do we need to read or write a file with our program? In many cases, the data we need in our program might be in some file from where we want to take that into our program. And quite often, we want to store data in some file outside our program. Consider a case where you need some detail like user login credentials and those are stored in some other file. So you will check those against the information there on the file. Moreover, if a user wants to change his credential detail, that must be changed on the external file so that later on the updated information is taken by the program. As last example, consider any game where you want to track the highest score by any player. So when the program will be closed and rerun, the information of the highest score must be taken from some external file. And if a player beats the highest score, the new highest score must be stored on some external file. If you will be storing this information in a program variable, that will get reset every time program is run. So for the updated score information, it must be stored into the external file and must be loaded from there. So let's see how we can read and write on the external text file with our Python program. We will start with reading a text file. Let's create a text file in our working directory. Name it anything like sample.txt. So it is a text file. I will copy five words in that text file. You can also view and open the file in the working directory. These are the five words I just copied in the file. Now we will write the python program to import the file data into the program. For that we use the function open and as the input argument we pass the file name as string. Since the file is inside the working folder, so we just need to pass the file name. If the file is placed at some other location, we will have to pass the complete path along with the file name. After the file name, we should specify the mode. By mode it means that we want to open the file to read that or to write on it. And there are a few other modes as well. To read the file, we can specify the mode as letter R. The default mode is read mode, so even if we don't specify it, it will be a read mode. It will create a text input output object, and let's assign that to some variable, for example f. To read the content of the file, we can use the read method of the IO class. Let's assign it to some variable. It will read the file content and assign that as a string to the variable which is named as content here. Read operation is complete and after that we should close the file using the close method on IO object. Let's print what we get from the file. And you can see these were the five words stored in the text file. This closing the file is an important step. If you will not close the file, it might not cause any problem apparently, but at times it can create problem. Let me explain that. I will open the same file but in a mode named as append which can be specified as letter A. In append mode we can write more content into the existing content of the file. We will see the detail of the append mode in a while but I just want to show the importance of closing the file. In append mode we can apply the write method which will write the provided content at the end of the text file. Now I should close the file but if I don't close that and will open the file again to read the content. Let's see what content is read from the file. You can see it is the same old content and the string we added on line number 7 is not there. What happened is that after writing UET Lahore in the file, we did not close the file and hence the changes were not saved. And when the file was read later on, it did not include the extra line. Let's see the text file and here we can see UET Lahore added into the file. I will remove it from the text file and now in the program I will close the file after the write operation. And now you can see it has read the updated file. So you see this closing the file after read or write operation is very important. Other than the issue shown here, it is needed for better resource management. When we open a text file, few resources are used by the program and by closing the file those resources are properly released. And actually there is a better way to handle this and that is by using the context manager. The context manager will close the file by itself. The context manager is created by using the with keyword. Then we have the file open function and after that we can assign a name to the created object using the as keyword. And then we have a colon sign which indicates that there will be a block of the code after this. 
So we should add one indentation step to make this code as a block of the context manager. And now we don't need the close function since that will be handled by the context manager by itself. We can move this print statement out of the block as well since the file is read inside the block and data is stored in the variable content which we can use outside the block as well. This UET Lahore is there because it was added into the file previously. Now for this case I can use the context manager. No need for the close function. Now is the context manager for reading the file. Let's see if UET Lahore is added into the file and read again correctly or not. We already had UET Lahore in the file. So if we run this, you can see UET Lahore is written one more time and we see that two times in the output. Let's move further. I will remove UET Lahore from the file. Now let's see if we read the file again inside the context manager. And I will print the content again. If we run this, you can see after the first read, nothing is printed in the second read attempt. So can't we read the file again? Basically when we read the file first time, it started reading that from the start and read until the end of the file and the cursor is at the last position of the file. So when we try to read the file again without closing it, the cursor was at the end of the file and hence there is nothing in the file after that. There is a method named as seek which can be used to set the cursor position. So if we use that here before the second read and pass in the position as zero which is the starting position of the file, you can see we have the content second time as well. The read method reads the complete text file. We have other functions as well. For example, this function read line will read one line of the text file. The cursor will move to the next line. So if we will use the same function again, it will read the second line. You can see the two lines read and displayed on the output. Note that we have extra blank lines as well because there is a new line at the end of the each line in the text file and the print statement also adds one blank line. The solution can be removing the new lines from the line being read. We have a method strip in the string class which removes the leading and the trailing white spaces from a string. Like read line, we have a method named as read lines. It will read all lines of the text file and will return a list of all those individual lines. You can see it is a list of text file lines as strings. If you have to read and process each line of the text file, a much better approach is using the for loop directly on the file. The loop variable i is the individual line of the text file in each iteration. Again we see extra blank lines and again we can use the strip method. This was all about the read operation of a text file. Now let's do a task. I have a text file in the working directory as la1.txt. It contains the detail of lab assessment 1 marks of one of the session. Each line contains registration number, name and the marks of the student separated by a tab. Total marks of lab assessments are 5. There are 96 entries. So here we can read the file. Let's do a task to display the detail of the students who got full marks in the assessment. So on each line of the text file, we can check if that ends with 5. We have a method in string class named as ends with, which we can use for this purpose. This is the output. You can see that we have these outputs which are not 5 marks, but 0.5 marks, because they also end with 5. So maybe we can add a condition that it does not end with 0.5. But still it is not a very good way. 
When we have one line of the text file as a string, we can apply different string class methods for better analysis. For example, we have a method named as split that will split a string on the basis of delimiter we provide, which for this case is a tab, and it returns a substring separated by the delimiter. So you can see each line is converted into a list with three strings and the marks are the last element of that list. Now we can very easily apply the condition that if third element of the list is 5, then print the detail of the student. Now if we need just the names of the students who got the full marks, we can print the second element of the list which is the name of the student. Now I have another text file and it contains the marks of 4 lab assessments. So there can be a few tasks on this file, for example total marks of each student or the highest total marks of the student or the average marks in all 4 assessments. The important point here is that if a student did not appear in any assessment, he is marked as absent, indicated by the letter A instead of the marks. Anyways, for all different tasks I mentioned, the file read operation is same that we have discussed and the remaining logic is basically the text analysis using different string class methods. We saw that detail in a video on the topic of strings, so I will not do these tasks here, but you can do that for a better string processing practice. However, I will mention here that for the extensive processing of the data, it is not recommended to use the simple text files and processing the strings. For that we can use the CSV files which we will study in the next lesson and even for more processing we have other python based frameworks and one very famous framework is named as pandas. The text files are usually used for the simple data storing that does not need much of the post processing. Now we will move to the text file writing functions. For that we will open the file using the open function. I am naming the file as sample2.txt and the mode will be writing mode which we can specify by the letter w. Note that the file sample2.txt does not exist in our working directory and this function will create a new text file. And if the file already exists on the directory, this function will override that file with a new blank file. So you have to be very careful here that this function will override the existing file and you will lose the data in there. To write something in that file, we use the write method of the IO class and pass the text we want to write as a string. We can write more lines. You can see we don't have this file sample2.txt in our directory. And if we run the program, you can see the file sample2 is created here. These are the three words we wrote in the file. All are printed on one line, so let's add the new line after each word. And now we see the words on each line. You can also see that the previous content of the file has been removed. Or if we run that again with the new content, Again the previous content is removed. Now let's see a few more writing functions which can ease the writing operations. I am defining a list with different string values. And now I will use the method named as write lines and I can pass a list as input argument. So the strings inside that list are written but again on one line. So I can add the new line characters in each string. Now we have another mode for writing on a text file known as the append mode and it is specified with letter A. What it does is that it will not overwrite the previous content of the file but will write new data at the end of that file by default or you can change the cursor position using the seek method. So here I am using the same sample2.txt file already having some data. And if I run the program now, you can see new data is added after the previous data on that file. Now let's do a task which involves both read and write operations. We have a text file for this task. Here we have detail of three customers for some store. The detail includes customer ID, his name, email and the amount of his bill. 
The task is to write a program for the admin of the store. He can get the details from the file or he can add more entries in the file. Therefore, we are taking the input from the user which is admin that he wants to have a query or he wants to add a new entry. And based on the input, we are calling two functions which we will be creating. So if he needs a query, we will write a function for that. Let's ask him to enter any customer field, for example, ID, name or email. And then we can open the file in read mode. Let's read each line of the file. And we can test if the field entered by the user is there in that line. So we can print that line. To incorporate both upper and the lowercase letters, let's apply the lower method on both strings. Let's run this. You can see two results corresponding to the entered query. There is extra line in between the outputs, so we can use the strip method over there. Now the second part is to allow the admin add more entries in the same file. Let's create the function for that. We must follow the same text format as in the present entries inside the text file. There are four fields in one entry and those are separated by a tab. So we should ask for the four fields of the customer. And now we can open the file in append mode. I should actually create one string from the four entered fields using the join method of the string class. The fields must be separated by the tab. So I will apply the join method on the tab string. Here we can simply write the generated string into the text file. Let's enter a new customer detail. Let's see the file. The new entry is added on the last line instead of a new line. No problem, we can add new line before writing the string. And now we have new entry as desired. So that was all about read and write operation of the text file. We saw three modes read, write and append. There are a few more which you can find on the official documentation and the link is given in the description. There is also possibility of opening the file in more than one mode. For that instead of showing you the code example, I will show you this stack overflow post which describes the detail very well. Here is the detail in the form of a table. And below you can find the detail as a flowchart. So that's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.